God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone, everyone, everyone of you. What a wonderful day it is, a glorious day it is. So we greet you with a glorious God bless you. Not just an average, you know, God bless you, but no, this is a glorious God bless you. One that is coming directly from the throne room of God because we understand that everything about God is glorious. He does everything gloriously. And because that's going to be the area that we're dealing with tonight, he could only greet us with a glorious God bless you. God bless the food that you eat that strengthens your flesh. God bless your family. Mm -hmm. God bless, listen, all of your finances. Mm -hmm. God bless your future. God bless your friends. God bless, most importantly, your faith. Mm -hmm. I am praying that the Almighty God just embeds that inside of you and inside of me that everything about us is absolutely blessed. I see some of you coming on. Mm -hmm. God bless you as you're coming on. Say God bless you back to me as you come on. Don't just come on, you know, mm -hmm. come on in and say God bless you to me as well. And I'm here to tell you that our testimony does not change, that our posture does not change, that our confession does not change. Mm -hmm. It does not matter how we feel. It doesn't matter what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what is or is not going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. The testimony is the same, and that is this. This is the day that the Lord has made, mm -hmm. and we will rejoice mm -hmm. and be glad in it. Welcome to day two of your fast. Mm -hmm. I know that by now, some of you should probably start feeling the results of your body being weaned mm -hmm. off of the things that you have been eating. You should start feeling the withdrawal from the caffeine, the withdrawal from the chocolate, the withdrawal from the foods that you were eating. And you ought to start feeling a cleansing that is going on in your lives. Probably by about um, uh, tomorrow or so, you're going to start seeing changes of color in your urine. By the time all of that other stuff gets out, mm -hmm. you know, you go through your really yellow stage and everything, and then you start going to clear again. Mm -hmm. We're thanking the almighty God. And I hope that you all went on our um, website and saw that um, write-up that Elder Beverly Ross, blessed yeah. memory, yeah. Um, had done on why we fast, uh, what we can expect when we fast, mm -hmm. the different types of fast, what to do when you feel certain things. I mean, she had in there what to do if you start cramping, mm -hmm. what to do if you start feeling weakness in your legs, and whatever you used the most while you were not fasting will be the thing that is hit first once you start fasting. So if you're standing on your feet all day prior to fasting, expect your legs, your feet and everything to start getting tired. You know, you won't have the strength um, initially, but then after about day three or day four, you'll start saying, you know what? I don't even feel like even eating the little bit that I am eating. You know, you stop having the appetites for things. Mm -hmm. Why? The more you start engaging with God and getting in this word Amen. and eating this word, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The more you start getting into that, after a while, um, the world's offerings mean nothing to you. Job said, mm -hmm. I desired his word more than my pleasant foods, mm -hmm. meaning that I don't even want the delicacies, the sweets and all of that kind of stuff. I desire my time with him. And I pray that that will be what will be your testimony, that you want him 
more than you want anything else. Let me take the time to thank Samara and Janice once again for the wonderful job that they do each time we have something going on on our Zoom, they make it happen. And I'm so very, very thankful for them that um, they put they put on hold or put to the side whatever is going on in their own lives to make it possible for us to be able to communicate this way. So God bless every one of you. And I hope that you are excitedly open for what God wants to share with you on today. I pray that you took some time today it was in our fast that you would take each day mm -hmm. at least one hour to just pray mm -hmm. in the Holy Ghost, to just mm -hmm. build yourself up, as it says in Jude 20 and 21, because it's only one book, mm -hmm. Jude 20 and 21. It says that we've got to pray, building ourselves up in the most holy faith, in our most holy faith, how? Praying in the Holy Ghost. You know, if you do it privately, then when we come public and we are setting the atmosphere and we're welcoming his presence, it will be easy to slip right into your prayer language mm -hmm. and have some communication with him in the presence of other people. You won't feel like, oh, I feel out of place. Oh, I don't remember what my prayer language is. Mm -hmm. Well, you practice it in private mm -hmm. so that you can perform it in public. Whatever you do in private is what you'll do in public. Some people will sometimes say, I didn't even know that was in me. Sure, whatever you're doing in public was in you in private. If you did not deal with it privately, then it's going to show up publicly. Yeah. I didn't know that I could be that mean. I didn't know I would say things like that. If you didn't check it in private, you're going to be doing it in public. I don't know what made me say that. What made me do that? Well, if you didn't ask Holy Spirit to put a guard on your mouth in private, mm -hmm. then when you get in public, whatever comes up is going to come out. Mm -hmm. If you did not deal with it privately, it's going to be what happens publicly. Right. The record is even this, that the Lord says that when you pray, what you pray in your secret closet privately, he will then reward you openly with that very thing. Mm -hmm. And so likewise, whatever you don't pray in private, you won't get in public and the adversary will have something to meddle with you in. Mm -hmm. We are in this season of this consecration and what we are doing this year, for those who are coming on, and you may not have participated last year, last year, the Almighty God had us getting our Trinity aligned. Mm -hmm. He shared with us from Thessalonians, and the very God of peace mm -hmm. sanctify you wholly, mm -hmm. and your whole spirit, and your whole soul, and your whole body be kept blameless until the day of Jesus Christ. He, he dealt with our Trinity, your spirit, your soul, mm -hmm. and your body. That's what he gave us to walk out and work on last year. Some of us will, will understand, well, maybe that's the reason why I went through so many emotional things last year. Yeah, because God was working on your soul this round. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the reason why. I had so many things that I thought was who I am and I got exposed. It's because he was working on your soulish realm. Maybe that's the reason why I had so many things that happened in my life. He was working on your soulish realm and showing the difference between where you were spiritually mature or immature, mm -hmm. where you relied on your mind, will, emotions, desire, intellect, your soulish realm, and where you just were too fleshy, where everything came from out of your flesh. And as we dealt with those issues last year, not that we came together and dealt with them, we did the fast, yes, and we preached the messages, yes, but you know, you have to take accountability and work on stuff yourself. If there are some things can nobody work on for you, 
you have to work on them for yourself. And those who did it, as we're coming up on this year, as you were closing out 2023, coming into 2024, you realize that you are the same jacked up mess mm. that you were in 2022 coming into 2023. Mm. And now you are going into 2024 fighting the same demons, mm. dealing with the same stuff that God has been trying to challenge you on from the great turnaround in 2020 to him doing everything that he gave us in each fast. So avoiding the fasts and avoiding the teachings and avoiding the times of consecration does not mean that you are going to be able to avoid the attacks, yes. avoid the onslaught. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to deal with them it's kind of like the old, it used to be a commercial out for um, the Fram motor oil filter. And that commercial said, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. Mm -hmm. The Fram oil filter was a little more expensive, but it was supposed to be able to do a little bit more. And so they said, you can pay the little bit extra now right. and get the filter, right. or you can do without the filter and, pray and pay later for something going wrong with your entire engine. Mm -hmm. And there are those who don't deal with, according to Song of Solomon, chapter two, verse 15, Song of Solomon, chapter two, verse 15, they don't deal with the little foxes mm -hmm. while they are small things. They wait until they are full blown issues. I've shared it before, in sermons that I've taught, and I'm going to take about three more minutes, giving people time to come on, mm -hmm. um, that here in our home, in our yard, um, my wife will sometimes say, we got so many animals, because you can look out in our backyard on any given day, and we've got gophers, you know, we've got moles that are just coming up, digging up the back of the yard. Then we've got deer that will all be out there, mother deer out there just eating off our trees because she's tall enough and the the little, the little baby deer trying to nurse on her while she's eating off of you know, mm -hmm. the trees. They can't reach the leaves, so they try to nurse off of her while she's eating the leaves. And let me just stick a pen there for a second, because sometimes that's what people will do. Mm -hmm. They're not willing to go to the level that you'll go, so they try to drain you. Boy, that's a sermon right there. Mm -hmm. They'll try to drain you while you're trying to nourish yourself. So we've got the gophers, we've got, you know, black squirrels that'll be running in the yard. We've got, you know, white skunks, albino skunks that will be back there yeah. in the yard, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll mess around every now and then we've got some stray cats, you know, you know, I used to remember when we first got in this area, I was trying to figure out why we would have stray cats and didn't realize that um, I think it was Janice was feeding them or Janice, something like that. Janice. You know, trying to figure out why we got these stray cats that kept having babies underneath our little sheds, you know. And um, she, <laughs> her compassionate heart was feeding them. And so they they really weren't straight far as they concerned. They were like, this is our home, mm -hmm. you know, because they were being fed. But then we have foxes mm -hmm. and foxes are very cute. They look like you can walk right up and pet them because when you walk out, they kind of freeze. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at you like you're looking at them and they're looking at you like you're looking at them. But do you know that those cute little foxes mm -hmm. have sharp teeth and if they bite you, you can get rabies. Mm -hmm. Song of Solomon 2.15 says, catch the little foxes because we've got tender grapes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the things that look innocent are the things that can poison you. And some of you are watching and listening to me right now. And you've got addictions that looked innocent initially. You've got habits mm -hmm. that seemed innocent Mm -hmm. initially you had just a little temper mm -hmm. that didn't seem that bad initially mm -hmm. you've got just a little bit of a struggle it doesn't seem that bad 
initially. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem bad until you blew up in public and everybody saw your little anger issue mm -hmm. going public. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until you wrecked the car, sideswiped some things, did some stuff, until that little drinking problem, that little, just a little smoking, little weed, little whatever your thing is, something big had to happen to show you that it's gotten out of control. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that yesterday and today we're dealing with spiritual issues and we're going to offset the negative things that are in our lives so that we don't wind up messing up where we're going in the next few days. There is a system that God has us on with each day that we deal with something. Mm -hmm. We dealt with faith mm -hmm. on yesterday because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. And we realize that it is possible to not have enough faith mm -hmm. for what we need for the problem we have. Mm -hmm. We found that with the man with his son. He said, Lord, I do believe but help my unbelief. I acknowledge that my faith is not where it's supposed to be. And we're praying, but we're also teaching and preaching. But we are praying that you will be built up and that you'll go to another level in your faith. Why? Because we are in a season of divine repositioning. And we can go from faith to faith. And tonight we're going to learn how we can go from glory to glory. That is a repositioning of one level mm -hmm. to another level. And when you have not been moved, you will then start thinking that other people are super spiritual mm -hmm. and you are able to be taken advantage of at services where you know, I just need a word, I just need a word. And you'll be giving a thousand dollars for a word that you could have gotten for yourself if you would have simply gotten in your word. And you'll find yourself making pastors and bishops and apostles and women of God, all of these people who are just like you and I, you'll wind up making them superstars in your eyes simply because they were willing to do what you were not willing to do. And then when they have struggles or issues or areas in their flesh, you then want to say, and that's why I don't go to church. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't serve God. And that's why I don't believe in Christians. No, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen mm -hmm. vessels, vessels made of dirt, of mm -hmm. clay, so that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. Mm -hmm. Meaning if there's any glory to be given, it goes to God. That is why I over and over again, every time you hear me teach, you're going to hear me say something about getting I, me, and my out of your vocabulary. Because the more you talk about yourself, bring attention to yourself, you may be getting whatever praise or plaudits or applause you get from people, but you're also putting a bullseye on you for the adversary to attack you mm -hmm. because he then says, oh, so you think it's about you. Mm -hmm. You think that you got here. You think that you can do this. He then takes it upon himself to expose you. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Bible says in James that if you humble yourself mm -hmm. under the mighty hand of God, then God will lift you up. It's better for you to humble yourself mm -hmm. than for God to have to let life humble you. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to teach tonight. Thank you for what you're going to share with us in this second day of our fast, in this area of our spirituality. Father, we have moved from faith on yesterday while we are yet studying it and still chewing on the meat of that word. We know, my Father and my God, that you have a fresh word for us tonight. So our ears are open and our ear 
yes. is open. Yes, our eyes are open and our eye is open. Yes, we want to both see and hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Yes, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And amen. everyone said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Well, come on, let's bless the Lord. We bless him and we magnify him. We thank God for the privilege of being here today. I want to remind everyone, please mute your phone. Please mute your phone. We don't want to have any interruptions in that vein. Do you know that it is possible for you to excel in glory? Do you know that it is possible for you to have such a glorious life mm -hmm. until those who say that they are walking in glory will be envious of you. Mm -hmm. There are levels, there are dimensions, mm -hmm. there are different types of glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I am praying I am praying as I have prayed before I come on and I will pray for you after I go on. I pray that you will never settle for being average in your glory as it relates to God. I want you to always want to excel to the next level of glory that God has available. <clears throat> I don't want you to sit back and say, well, oh, that's just them, they're super spiritual. Mm -hmm. Well, then why can't it be you mm -hmm. being super spiritual? Well, that's just, that's just you, you're anointed for that. I've been told that many times. My thing is always then why aren't you anointed for that? What work have you put in to be anointed, or are you simply riding the anointing of somebody else? I want to deal with you because as you dealt today and you read today concerning glory, you heard where it said, and our thought or our point for the day, that whatever and whoever you associate with yes. will affect your appearance and shape your mindset mm -hmm. and outlook on life. I remember my mom, blessed memory, used to always tell me, you know, and this is an old, old saying. It's an old country saying, old country saying. You know, and I used to want to be around certain people and you know, hang with certain guys and, and, and date certain girls and be around stuff like that. My mama would say it and my grandmother said it as well, but this is an old saying. Some of you all have heard it too. Here it is. It says, if you lay down with dogs, mm -hmm. you're going to get up with fleas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'm not laying down with dogs, mama. Mm -hmm. I'm not hanging with dogs, grandmama. But the reality was, when I was down in Louisa County, Virginia, down the country with my grandmother and my grandfather, and then here in Washington with my mama, where we had dogs, Brownie, Sissy, Poncho, Chico, all of the dogs I had, the more I was around them, I had to check myself mm -hmm. for ticks. Um, very good. Thank you so very, very much. I knew that you all would sort it out. You all are great like that. So um, the thing about ticks is that they would always get up in areas of your flesh. And when because it says my recordings. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm not quite sure why it keeps doing that. Um, but um, the thing that we had to deal with was um, not letting the dogs get so close up to us and then being extra careful about checking our selves. Mm -hmm. Well, what we need to do, even as we are seeking to go to other levels of glory, we've got to be careful of who we associate with mm -hmm. because association brings about assimilation. Mm -hmm. Assimilation brings about affiliation and affiliation brings about identification. Mm -hmm. Whoever you associate with, that's why if you're struggling with your identity, if you're struggling trying to get off of a particular addiction of any kind, there are certain environments you cannot afford to put yourself in. There are certain places you can't afford to be. If you are a recovering alcoholic, you cannot afford to go to a happy hour business meeting. Whatever your area, your deficiency, your struggle is, you've got to make sure that you don't go in those areas. Conversely, if you're trying to be a better Christian, then you want to be in prayer meetings and Bible studies and around people who are talking the word of God, standing on the word of God, believing the word of God. I'm here to tell you that just like there are some people that you cannot be with because, you know, what communion does light have with darkness? There are some Christians that are so carnal until you can't afford to be around weak, carnal, immature believers. And so when we're talking now about going to another level of glory, we're going to have to deal with associations, mm -hmm. relationships, people that we are around. I want to very quickly, um, I don't know how to make this. Let's see if I can get that big again. Let's see. I want to, I want to look, please, at Exodus chapter number 34. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter number 34. And I'm going to read it before I go into um, our prayer for this evening. Exodus 34, beginning at verse 29. Mm -hmm. It reads this way. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony, these are the Ten Commandments, were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. He's coming off the mountain, got the Ten Commandments. He didn't know he was shining. Watch this. Mm -hmm. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Mm -hmm. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Literally, co-pastor, mm -hmm. he came down from the mountain with the commandments in his hand, and they ran. Mm -hmm. They ran from him. I want someone to hear me and know that there's a reason why your crowd gets thin. Oh, there's a reason why your friendships and your circle of friends are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Because the more you spend time in the presence of God, the more you spend time in the word of God, some stuff you're not going to laugh at no more. You're not going to key, key, key just because you want to fit in. Mm -hmm. There are some places you're not going to go. I know we have this plan mm -hmm. and it's good. I just can't go. There are some things that you are going to have to get used to being in a smaller crowd or being happy with Jesus alone because the closer you get to him, the more people will get away from you. They will start saying, Don't, you can't even talk to him no more. You, 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 you can't even talk to her no more. They're they going to always go Bible on you. They're going to be so deep. They're going to be so deep. 
Well, what is a geek person? Somebody who chooses to love God more than you. Mm. A fanatic, my father in the Lord, E.A. Adeboye, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide based in Lagos, Nigeria, says, a fanatic is somebody who's more determined to live holy than you are. Because there's going to always be somebody who's going to say, it's not that serious. I hate that phrase. Because to say something is not that serious to someone is to downplay how serious it may be to them. Simply say it's not that serious to me because you may not be at the level with somebody else, but it is dismissive to tell somebody that what they're feeling or what they're saying or what their position is is not a serious one. It is serious to them. It's just like somebody can say, when you're dealing with death, well, they gone, you know, it ain't that serious. Well, they aren't going through the death that you're going through. They're not going through what you're feeling. It is dismissive. And many people do it purposely as a weapon to make you not feel what you feel or to show forms of superiority over you. It's, to, it's a way to try and hurt you. So when Moses comes down, I want you to see this right now, they ran from him. There are some people in 2024, I don't know if you're ready for this, but they're going to, you're not going to have to block them on social media. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to do cancel culture with them. There are some people that are going to, thank you, Holy Spirit, there are some people that are going to leave your life because of your glory, your stand with God. Here it is. And don't compromise to beg them to come back. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Because God has something else, some place else, someone else. Are you ready for this? Because when he repositions you, he has to reposition everything that concerns you. So he's got to have some place else for you, which means you can't stay in this place. He's got someone else for you, which means you can't be addicted to this someone. You've got to be willing, I told you in the beginning of our writings and what we were sharing on yesterday, that repositioning means that everything concerning you has to be repositioned. That's why we're having to change in our spirituality. We're going to have to change in our career. We're going to have to change in our physicality. We're going to have to change in our finances. We're going to have to change in every facet of our lives. Repositioning you means that everything that touches you has got to be repositioned as well. Verse 32 of that same Exodus 34, and then we're going to go. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near. When did they come near? After Aaron, watch this, and the rulers came near. The followership only did what the leadership did. When the leadership ran, the followership ran. When the leadership came back, the followership came back. Many people who were leaders ran during the pandemic. And because they ran or left during the pandemic, or they panicked during the pandemic, then their followers, whether it's in your church, your business, your home, your family, as you move, so moves those who follow you based on their level of spiritual maturity, mm -hmm. which is why we're dealing spiritually yes. first, yes, it because is. it is your foundation yes. for everything else. Here we go. Verse number 33. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Isn't this something? He had to literally put a veil on his face. Yes, yes. Because he could not, they could not handle his shine. 
he had to put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before God to speak with him, Moses would take the veil off. That's right. Why? He got the shine by being in the presence of the glory of God. So he had God's glory on top of him when he came out of God's presence. Mm -hmm. The ones who had not been in God's presence could not handle his glory. There are some people that you'll say, there is no way you are the age that you are. I say in all humility that every time I go into the gym and I'm working out with the guys, they'll all say, how old are you? How old are you? And then when I tell them, they say, man, you're what I want to be when I get your age. I said, well, I'm working with you all. Here it is so that I don't look my age. I have to work with guys, work out with guys that are 25 and 30 years old so that I don't wind up moving and acting like someone who's 90 years old. Who you associate with, association brings about assimilation. Assimilation brings about affiliation. Affiliation brings about identification. This is just who I am. No, you are the byproduct of who you associate with. And if you hang around people who are always acting old, you will start looking old. Your face will start drooping old. Your face and body will start moving old. I'm just old. I just, you know, and you'll start being that you, you have to change your associations if you want new levels of glory. Hang around with people who are up on another level spiritually. I had someone to say to me, well, I know that once you get back from Nigeria, I know how you're going to push us. Well, it's not that I'm going to push you anyway. It's just that once I hang around certain people, I cannot act like people who don't want anything, who are not on a level spiritually, which is why I try to keep pushing everyone. Don't, don't look at me as anything special. Come where I come, get what I get, see what I see, and it will change your outlook on life. I conclude this part of Moses so we can get into it. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. I love that Moses didn't have to hide nothing. Mm -hmm. I can come in God's presence and here I am. I don't have to hide anything. Now watch this. He was still Moses, but he didn't have to hide. Mm -hmm. He still had his issues, mm -hmm. but he didn't have to hide when he came to God. Mm -hmm. He was still a man but he didn't have to hide it when he came to God. Mm. I'm here to tell you that when you go into time to talk with God, you don't have to pretend like you've got it all together. The glory was on him. Don't miss this. And he still had anger issues. Yes. He had glory on him and he was still working through being what he was supposed to be. He had glory on him and still didn't make it into the promised land. Mm -hmm. You need to understand what I'm trying to tell you, that when you come into God's presence, you don't have to pretend like you're perfect. If you've got the issues, go to him and admit the issues. The same, you, you, don't, you know, you fake with people all the time. You're trying to convince them that you've got glory. When you come into God's presence, he already knows you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that um, um, when he came out of the presence, of the Lord, then he would put the veil on. But when he was in the presence of the Lord, he could take the veil off. It says, and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. Verse 35, and whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, mm -hmm. that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again mm -hmm. until he went to speak with him. What do people see when they look at you? Mm -hmm. What do they see? Mm. Do they see somebody who looks like they're having the worst day of their life? Mm. Do they see somebody who's always crying? 
Do they see somebody whose face is dragging and drooping? Do they see somebody whose face has been through tough times? Um, when I used to go down um, Louisa County, Virginia with my grandparents, um, there was tobacco that was picked down there and um, it was dealt with, cured and all of that kind of stuff. And the men that worked with picking it, they looked one way because they were out in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, and so they got this sun type thing on them. But the ones that were inside of the place where it had to be cured and taken care of and cut up and all that kind of stuff, they had this leathery look on their skin because their skin was affected by the tobacco and all of what was being done to make it able to be taken to the stores and sold. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whatever atmosphere you in will affect your skin. You can say, oh, I don't do this. No, your skin says you do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I ain't been out in the sun. No, your skin says you have been. You know, those who don't look like us, if they don't put on suntan oil or lotion or whatever, they get out in the sun and they come back where their glasses were, it's all red and everything like that. No, your skin mm -hmm. is going to tell on you. They used to have a saying out that what's in your heart will show on your face. Yeah. So now, beloveds, as we get into this time of prayer, and I remind you that each prayer point, you are only going to have 15 seconds to pray each prayer arrow, and we're going to move on. So in our teaching for today, mm -hmm. in our teaching for this evening, mm -hmm. we share with you that the concept of glory is this. The more that you stay in the presence of God, the more that you will take on his character, yes, yes, his likeness, his attributes, his glory, mm -hmm. his shine mm -hmm. will be transferred to you. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me you're spending time in your prayer room and you still come out cussing. Oh my. You cannot tell me you are spending time in the presence of God and you still come out with no power. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me you are spending time in the presence of God and you still don't love people. You cannot tell me you're spending time in the presence of God and you are still mean-spirited, manipulative, and chasing after stuff instead of chasing after him. Because whoever you associate with, here it is, you take on his character, mm -hmm. his likeness, yes. and his attributes. Yes. You may have used to done that when you were in the world, but why are you still like that now? Why are you still, I'm this close to fighting somebody. I'm this close to cutting somebody. I was this close to cussing them out. When do you not be this close? <laughs> When do you stop making it about you? Because you can't be in his presence and still be that way. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, it says, but we all with unveiled face, meaning that we come to God and we are not pretending. With unveiled face, we are beholding as in a mirror. The glory of the Lord, meaning I look in the glory of the Lord and I see me in his glory. I am made in his image. He ought to look in me and see himself. Mm -hmm. And we're being transformed, repositioned into the same image. How? From glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord. And so now our first prayer arrow that we're going to pray is going to be one of thanking God. Yeah. Father, thank you, because remember, I'm not going to that one yet, daughter. Thank you. We're going to thank yes. God yes. that he has graced us to have a time to change our face. Amen. We talk to him Face to face. Right. Um, in, in the arts, it will be um, two faces together, a sad face and then a smiling face. 
those two masks side by side. You've seen them all of the time, oh, yeah. you know? And so God is giving us a chance to change from the sad face mm -hmm. to the happy face mm -hmm. because we look like him. Just take 15 seconds and pray this prayer. Say, Father, give me the grace, me the grace to, change my face. to change my face. Go ahead, pray now. Father, give me the grace by virtue of this teaching tonight. Give me the grace to change my face. I want to move from what people are comfortable with to having the face that is comfortable in your presence. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so now, beloveds, how do we make that change? How do we do it? Friends, it is done by virtue of something that takes place in our lives. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter number three, mm -hmm. verses 15 and 16. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter number three, verses 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. It reads this way. 2 Corinthians chapter number three, mm -hmm. verses 15 and 16. You all write it down and that way, you'll be able to go back and see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It says this, but even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Yes. Now, co-pastor, we were reading about the veil over his face in the book of Exodus. Exactly. Here we now in the New Testament in yes. 2 Corinthians. And, and Paul is saying, and they still, every time they read the scriptures of the life of Moses, there is a veil that they have over their face when they read the story. He says, there is still a veil over their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, yes. repositioning, the veil is taken away. Mm -hmm. So here's our first prayer arrow. You've got 30 seconds to pray this one. You're going to say, Father, help me to shed all of this dead skin, oh, this my, flesh, oh that keeps me from looking like you. Yes, Moses' face would look like God's glory when he went in his presence. Mm -hmm. We want to shed. You know what sheds its skin when it wants to be new? A snake does. Yeah, yeah. Whenever a snake wants to be new, mm -hmm. it's got to shed its skin, its flesh. I'm telling someone that's watching, listening to me, to 2024, you cannot be operating in your flesh. Mm. It's not based on how much money you have, how much intellect you have, how many degrees you have. It's not based on how strong you are, how smart you think you are. You're going to have to do this by shedding your flesh. Mm. Lay aside every weight and the sin. We dealt with that on yesterday evening. I want to shed. Yes, you've got some serpentine um, attributes. You've got some snakish ways, mm -hmm. and we've got to shed that. Come on, let's pray that prayer. You've got just 15 seconds for each one of these. I think you can go straight up. Say, Father, help me to shed, me to shed all of this dead flesh dead. that keeps me from looking like you. Go oh, ahead, pray that prayer, my Father and my God. Everything that is hindering me from looking like you, my father and my God, I want to be stripped of it. I don't want to operate by my flesh. I want to operate by your spirit. I want you to get glory out of my life. I don't want my father and my God to any attention to come to me. Let it all go to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's make it personal. So shall it be for me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. The second way that we can move from glory to glory, notice, co Pastor, it's from glory to glory, which means that there must be another level of glory. In order for us to move from glory to glory, mm -hmm. look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. You all know this by heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. Yes, he is. Old things have passed away. Yes. Behold, all things have become new. Yes. It said, what old things have passed away. You cannot keep on holding on to old stuff because that was your protection. I'm just nasty because it makes people stay away from me. Mm. I'd rather they think I'm crazy than to know I'm scared. Some of the things that you are holding on to is because it is your Linus and Peanuts with Snoopy and Charlie Brown. It's your security blanket. Mm. You've never felt protected, so you come off rough to make people stay away from you. Yeah. You come yeah. off nasty because you try to make people stay away from you. Nobody ever protected you. And therefore you come off a certain way to make people stay away from you. But tonight is the night for change. Amen. If you want what God has for you in the new reposition location, you can get it by being the same old, mean, sarcastic, sharp tongue, quick witted, cut somebody down, you. Because in order for you to get what he has in the next level of glory, you've got to change in order for him to take you to that place. You will destroy what he's trying to put you in simply because you refused to change. Oh I'll share something very simple in all humility. When I first started going to Africa, when I first started going there, they would bring me food. And I told you all this many times. I'd say, what is this? And they would say, this is beef. And I'd say, what is this? And they would say, this is pork. And then I'd say, what is this? And they'd say, this is beef. Well, that threw me off because we only have one beef in America. And then I'd say, well, what is this? They say, well, that's pork. And I was thrown off because we only have one pork in America, pig. Then I say, well, what is this? And they would say, this is meat. And then I say, well, then what is this? And they would say, this is game. And then I say, well, what is this? They said, this is bush meat. Now, all of them were meats. But my narrow mindedness of being in America knows that there's only there's beef, there's pork, there's poultry and there's fish. Mm -hmm. But all these different meats under the name of beef and pork threw me off. Finally. One Nigerian, uh, my big brother, who is now a king, um, Pastor Gandhi, he said, he said, why do you think that we would give you something that we eat every day that wouldn't be good for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to change my way of thinking because God was putting me on a platform all over Nigeria with Nigerians all over the world that opened me up to Indonesians by meeting them in Nigeria. If I kept my, my, my mentality that was so narrow that I could not see beyond what I was used to, doors of opportunity would be shut to me because I was not willing for the divine repositioning because my narrow-mindedness wasn't open to change. There are some of you that are asking for jobs, asking for new platforms, asking for husbands, asking for wives, asking for you fill in the blank. Yet your narrow mindedness only says I can only be happy with me because I'm not willing to expand my thinking. I'm not willing to expand the way I look at stuff. I'm not willing to be the not sharpest knife in the drawer so somebody can pour into me or do something. I'm not willing to change. We're now going to pray because if we're in Christ, we're a new creature. So our prayer arrow is going to be, Father, let my change be so dramatic until no one remembers the old me. Oh my. I know you're talking about the way I used to be. No, I don't want to remember that. And you shouldn't want to remember that. You've got 15 seconds. Lift your voice and pray this prayer. Say, Father, let my change be so dramatic until no one even remembers the old me. Go ahead, pray now, my Father and my God. I want my change to be so dramatic. Nobody remembers me. They don't remember my old pet name. They don't remember my old nastiness. They don't remember what I used to do. 
the way I used to talk, the way I used to conduct myself. Oh, my father, they will no longer remember that I used to borrow and never pay it back. Father, let my change be so dramatic until my father and my God, nobody remembers the old me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you please make it personal? So okay. shall it be for me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Man, that one, that one, that one kicked that me in my behind. Yeah, that one kicked me in my behind because whenever things aren't going well in our walk with God, we always want to say, you know, I know how to make money, but we want to revert to old schemes, old manipulations when things don't work out for us. Yeah. I don't have to be by myself. I know how to get somebody. Why is that still in your mind? Why is that still a mindset? Why is your conniving still in you? Why have you been saved so long and that hasn't worn out of you? What is it that makes you keep holding on to your Linus blanket, your Charlie Brown blanket, your hanging on to old stuff? You mean to tell me that after all this time, you don't trust God any more than that? Here's our third and final prayer arrow. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40 and 41. 1 Corinthians, is this helping anybody? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40 and 41 reads this way. Mm -hmm. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Celestial making reference to bodies or planets that are above or terrestrial bodies things that are on the earth realm. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So co-pastor, the stars that are in heaven have a different glory than the stars, movie stars, actors, whatever, that we have here on earth. Right, right. What's happening out there in the planets is greater than what's happening down here on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. For those of you who think that there's no other life, there's nobody else in the world but on planet Earth, you've limited God. Yeah. Every day they're now finding there are people, there are aliens walking the planet, there's stuff that's coming out, there are things they see them walking in the heavens. They're, they're, they're starting to see spacecrafts and all of that stuff. And folk are trying to downplay it because the Lord is on his way back. And when he comes and take us away, it's going to all look like, well, it was just something that happened, some celestial, whatever. No, I'm telling you, God is getting us ready and he's making his presence more visible every single day. Here's what he says in verse 41. 41. There is one glory of the sun, mm -hmm. another glory of of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. Mm -hmm. The same, listen, the sun has its own shine. Right, right. But the moon doesn't have its own shine. It gets its shine from the sun. Mm -hmm. So they both have a shine, but the shine's different. What we see as a star tonight was actually a star that burnt out billions of years earlier. It's just that we see the after effects of it because it takes that long for light to travel. Wow. And so there is a different glory. That's why somebody needs to hear me when I tell you it is possible for someone to still be on a platform, but God ain't even using them no more. Wow. It is possible for you to have once been something and you still work a few miracles and you still have a few things happen, but God has taken his hand off of you. I'm praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will not be, as they say in the sports world, that you will just be, um, how, how do they call it? A lame duck. You'll just be somebody in the position, but has no real power. You'll be somebody who is in the place, but have, we, we, we have a coach right now in Washington that he's just going through the motions. He's already been fired. He's just in the position and hasn't left yet. 
I'm saying that to you. I pray that God does not keep you in a position where he has already fired you. I pray that God does not allow you or I to just be in a position and he has already disqualified us. That our glory is already gone. It's just that we haven't burned out yet. Pray this prayer. Pray it with all of your might. This is the last one. Father, grace me to abide in the glory that was developed with you and let me never be envious of someone else's shine. Ah. You know, many of us will try to tear somebody else down because we're not where they are, or I don't have what you have, or I'm not as smart as you are, or I don't, I haven't had the opportunities you have. So what? You've had opportunities to operate in your glory and then to develop your glory. Yeah, but I don't do it like you. You're not supposed to, you're you. Yeah, but I don't know what you know. You have to study to know what you know. Let's pray this last prayer arrow and pray it like warriors. Say, Father, grace me to abide. Grace me to abide. In the glory that was developed with you. And let me never be envious. Let me never be envious. Of someone else's shine. Someone That's else. really the prayer. Let me never be envious of someone else's shine. Yes, Go ahead and pray that prayer. My Father and my God, let me never be envious of someone else's glory, someone else's shine. I don't know the demons they have to deal with. I don't know the devils they have to fight. I don't know the addictions that they have. I don't know the bloodline they had to come through, but my Father and my God, help me to rest. Help me to be content and the glory that I developed with you, you. in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father and my God, I pray now for every person who is watching. Yes. Everyone who is listening. Yes, Lord. I pray, my Father and my God, that they will be as the world has termed, that they will be comfortable in their own skin. Yes. They will be comfortable in who you made them to be. Yes, Lord. That they will not live their lives trying to tear somebody else down. Jesus. Trying to expose somebody else's failures oh just so that they can look good. Mm -hmm. Father, remove every area of insecurity Amen. in the lives of the ones who are watching and listening to me now Jesus. that they will never try to get a leg up mm -hmm. by bringing somebody else down let them rest in the glory that you have given them Amen. in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray yes lord and now, my Father, if there's someone who has never accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, Jesus. all of this teaching means nothing to them. Mm. Let this night be the night that they surrender themselves to you. Amen. And as they pray this prayer with me, let a definitive decision be made. If you're there and you're watching, you're listening, and your walk is not where it once was, yes, or you know that you have flat out backslidden. Mm. You know that you made a decision and got away from God and now you want to come back. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've never made a decision for the Lord before. Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Here, I am. here I am. I surrender. I surrender. I've heard your word. Heard your word. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. I've gotten out of your presence. I've gotten out of your presence. The glory, the glory has left. But tonight, I pray because of this word that I have heard, I pray that you would receive me as your child. Give me another chance. I'm coming home to you. Holy Spirit, move in me. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Saving. 
In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer, we thank God you are part of the body of Christ. We're happy to have you as our brother, our sister, our son, our daughter. Yes. Please go on our website, www.fumd.com, where it says connect with us. We would love to hear that you made this decision for the Lord on amen. this evening. Amen. I'm praying because the Bible says that there is a word called Ichabod which means the glory has departed. Yes, sir. I pray that where there has been Ichabod mm -hmm. written over your life, over your relationship, over your marriage, over your money, over your career, mm -hmm. over your friendships, your relationships, I pray that Ichabod will be lifted off of everything that concerns you. Mm -hmm. If the glory returns, your money will change. Mm -hmm. If the glory returns, your health will change. Mm -hmm. If the glory returns, everything concerning you will be repositioned. And that's why we're doing this teaching mm -hmm. so that we can have the return in the thing spiritually. So that when we go to the next phase, on tomorrow, um, we'll be able to say, okay, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm ready to do this. I'm right. good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm ready to go to the next level and have all of my stuff to be repositioned and not just have, you know, a spiritual high because I'm fasting and then going through everything being wrong um, because I'm no longer fasting. So tomorrow we're going to be getting into section two, which is dealing with our physical self. Mm -hmm. It does no good to have the spiritual things taken care of and then the house where the spirit lives in is falling apart. Mm -hmm. We're going to be dealing with that. You want to say something before we leave? Right? Yeah, thank, I thank God for tonight because uh, that glory to glory really uh, expanded itself. And, and since you're dealing with the spiritual part, spiritually, because we can now see we, we don't have to stay on this one level of glory, mm -hmm. that there's so many other areas of glory that we can obtain. So that, that was awesome. One time. Amen, amen, amen. And that's what we want to do. We want to move. We want to move. We want to move. It yeah, does yeah. no good to just, you know, many people have just gotten comfortable. And some people, and I'm saying it because I've had a few birthdays now, and all of your zeal is gone. Jesus. You can have birthdays and all of a sudden just get stuck. That's right. And you don't want to move. Know. You don't want to go to another level. I'm just waiting for swing low, sweet chariot. Mm. I'm waiting for the Lord to come and carry me home. Mm. You know, at 85, Caleb said, give me this mountain. Mm -hmm. I want it and all the giants to go with it. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to die at 55, 60, 65, and 70. Mm -hmm. Caleb said, I want it at 85. At 120, Moses was climbing a mountain to go up and meet with God to see the promised land. Mm -hmm. There are enough instances in the Bible that should make you want to live. Mm -hmm. And we're going to deal with that on tomorrow when we deal with the physical. Yes, Thank yes. you again, Janice. Thank you so much, Samara. I so appreciate the both of you so very, very much. And all of you that were on tonight, I love you. I love you. I Amen. love you. Be Amen. blessed is my prayer in Jesus' name. And tonight, mm -hmm. if you haven't done your hour of praying in the Holy Ghost, make sure you do it. Amen. And watch glory come in the room Amen. where you are. Amen. And ask God in one of your prayers tonight, ask him to touch you with his glory yes. so that your face can shine. Amen. Until tomorrow, be blessed is my prayer Amen. in Jesus' name. I bless you. Thank you, Jesus.